And I think people are now realizing that it is uh, no joking matter what we have seen that is starting to come out of uh, the, the commercialization of marijuana. And we would just like to bring a, a sober view to this. Right now, um, this is hitting all of Connecticut in many different ways, whether we see with wrong way driving uh, and the increase of fatal accidents, which was warned about years ago when we were uh, debating the commercialization of, of pot. Um, also, we're seeing the rise of children in emergency rooms from accidental ingestion of, of marijuana. Uh, and our concern today is in this legislature, there are individuals that are tone deaf. There's conversations of actually expanding the program and making it even more accessible uh, to the public at a time when we haven't even gotten our arms around the enforcement and the safety pieces of this. And so what the House Republicans are leading with today is a proposal that is looking to put some guardrails, better guardrails, around the system that we have in place. Good morning, everybody. One of our proposals is to establish a cap on the amount of THC present in a single serving and requires the disclosure of the amount of THC present uh, and its potency. Cannabis products, especially vapes, can have up to a 99% concentration of THC. Uh, compared to the marijuana of your youth or the romanticized nature of Woodstock, the 60s, 70s, or 80s, the concentration of THC back in those days is around 2 to 5% at most. The adverse medical consequences from these products at these strengths is staggering. We suggest that some of you maybe consult with your local first responder, EMS, or uh, an emergency room employee just to see how large the problem is that we're creating. Uh, we also have a uh, proposal in to restrict licensed gasoline dealers for selling any product that contains any form of THC. Currently, many gas stations and retailers are selling Delta 9, Delta 8, tinctures, and flower products. We did a study in my town of Trumbull. Uh, one of our local drug cooperatives sent, there's 11 uh, retail locations or gas stations in the town of Trumbull. Eight of them had Delta 9 and Delta 8 on the shelves and selling it. One of them was, uh, had products similar to what the Attorney General was talking about yesterday, cookies, Oreos, Cheez-Its, all these bag stuff that were all THC products sold in an illegal manner. It was a simple vape shop. It wasn't a retail marijuana location. Um, we would like to prohibit cannabis locations, uh, cannabis consumption anywhere alcohol is prohibited. We think this is common sense. If you can't drink in a park, you can't smoke in a park. Uh, so we would like to have, have some sort of parity with the consumption of, of marijuana and pot with that of alcohol. Um, we also think that we should follow the recommendations of the Social Equity Council, Council and um, make sure that each one of these retail locations has a certified bud tender. Um, and it's a silly name, but they do have a function. They're supposed to be able to guide somebody through the process of buying, letting them know exactly what they're consuming and what strength they're consuming it and what the portion should be. Um, we also have some, some uh, recommendations to the Department of Consumer Protection that uh, they be required to review and approve each cannabis product and type in its dosage, review the tracking procedures in retail and pharmacies, and uh, designate cannabis, redesignate cannabis as a Schedule II here in Connecticut, uh, the retail cannabis as a Schedule II. Um, and also, we think it's very important that the Department of Consumer Protection specify that secondhand cannabis smoke is toxic to human health. So is the vape vapor that's released when people do uh, vape uh, marijuana. So, yeah. yeah, a couple other items deal with the law enforcement side. I mean, certainly we need the funding for the drug recognition officers. And uh, until we start getting more drug recognition officers on the streets, uh, DCP should suspend, and we're calling for a suspension of the approval of any additional retail sales outlets and, uh, and grow facilities. Uh, quite frankly, uh, looking at the numbers that are coming in, the revenue numbers look like they're falling half of what was projected. Uh, so I'm not sure that there's even a need to approve additional facilities uh, when we're already seeing sales not even near what was projected. Uh, we also believe that we need to restore legislation that allows for police officers to pull somebody over uh, when they're witnessing um, the smoking or the ingest ingestation of marijuana products. 
you know, currently they don't have the ability uh, that was excluded in the, in the legislation to commercialize. So uh, when that bill was passed, not only did they make marijuana more accessible to individuals, but they're also saying to law enforcement, don't pull them over if they're doing drugs while they're driving. It makes no sense whatsoever. And so we would like that restored so police officers can enforce the law and begin to do um, you know, searches and be able to uh, get the bad actors off the road. Uh, we're already seeing an increase, like we said before, of uh, fatalities with runway driving. These individuals have had, not all, but they are individuals have had THC in their, in their bloodstream um, with these fatalities. So police officers need those tools. The legislation that was passed provided that marijuana, the, the, the witnessing of marijuana itself does not constitute probable cause to pull an individual over. And so given the world now where police are under attack and they don't have immunity, um, they're already hesitant to pull somebody over to begin with. Uh, and now our legislature, the Democrats, made it a policy decision to say, let them smoke pot and drive. And we're saying undo that.